Hey, how's it going out there? So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and go through my process for breaking down a lake and looking for waypoints. And we already went over how to transfer those waypoints. I'll leave a card at the end of the video that shows how to transfer all those waypoints around in the different programs. But for now, what I wanna show you is using Google Earth Pro and a couple other programs and putting them side by side on your screen so that you can go ahead and get the best of both worlds. You can take a look at the contours and then take a look at it on Google Earth Pro and see if there's anything interesting in that area. Because um, a lot of my waypoints, when I first set them up, I went by just the contours. And when I downloaded them onto Google Earth Pro, I overlaid them, I could see that, wow, if I just went, you know, 20 yards up here, there were some laydowns, you know, or something like that. Let's go ahead and go through that and take a look at the different programs and the different strategies. Now remember, in your part of the country, you may be looking for something totally different than what I'm looking for. Obviously, my lake is gonna be nothing like the Harris Chain Lakes in Florida. You know what you're looking for, but this is just a way for you to take a, take a look at things and get some waypoints. So let's go ahead and get started into the video. Okay, so a little bit of history that I've dug up or that I've seen is seemed like back in about 2010, 2011, I believe is the video I looked at, you were able to take and overlay the Navionics maps onto Google Earth Pro. And they've since done away with all that. And what I'm noticing they're doing is they're, they're going ahead and they're pushing everything over to your phone. And so we're going to go over a couple of different ways you can still do it. One of them being the Navionics website, and they have, you know, a web view that you can use. Uh, but you can't really transfer waypoints on and off of it. But it is good for looking at contours side by side with Google Earth Pro. The other is Garmin Homeport. And Garmin Homeport is obsolete. They no longer support it. At the time I made this video, you could still download it off the internet. So if you don't have it, uh, you may want to go ahead and do that. It's, it's just another tool to put in your toolbox. And then the third one is on your phone, and that's using your Active Captain app. Or if you subscribe, you could use Navionics. Na the Navionics app works really good too. So we'll go ahead and go over these three and, and let you take a look at them and kind of give you an overview of what I look at when I'm breaking down a lake and I look at them side by side. And the first one we'll go over is this Navionics app. You don't have to have an account, um, but it's got pretty good detail on it. And one thing I like about this Navionics is it shows the depths, but as you can see, Right in here, we got a pretty good, looks like a channel swing. And that's kind of what I'm looking for, is I'm looking for different. Now this is as close in as you can get with this app. The one drawback to the Navionics is you really can't mark waypoints on it and transfer back and forth and all that. So for right now, let's focus in right here. Okay, so we can see that pretty good. Now down here on the Garmin home port, and the Garmin home port, if you don't have it, I'd suggest that you go ahead and download it pretty quick. Because when I talked to the Garmin folks, they said, oh, you found a copy of that? It is on the internet still, and you can still get it. And it's got pretty good detail, not quite as good as I think the Navionics does, but you can transfer your waypoints from Google Earth Pro or from any KML file into this and they show up. I did some test runs here because I saw some things on Google Earth Pro that I really liked. So let's take a look at those real quick. So on Google Earth Pro, we got a 2016 when the water level was up. We got a picture of that. But look when I back this up. See that big old rock pile right there? And in here, you've got another pretty good sized bunch of rocks. So that's why I went ahead and transferred those 
over on to here. Because they look pretty darn interesting. Now looking around some more, we went over here and I marked what looked like a creek that was right in here. And again, here I'm looking at this contour and I'm seeing different. I'm seeing a bowl right in here. So let's take a look at that area. So right in here you can see what looks like a ridge right in there. And that's what I marked right here. And this up here, when you look, it looks kind of like a bowl up in there. Let me turn that around a little bit. See how you can turn that arrow up here like this? And you can get a little better look at it. And that looked pretty darn interesting. So I went ahead and marked that. Now, for you crappie guys, oh, you're going to love this. This you're going to love. Right in here. And you can kind of see where that channel swing goes in there. Yeah, look at that, guys. Look at that. Now, let me see if I can find the picture I found earlier. It's pretty cool. So we're going to center that up right there. There it is. See that boat right there? <laughs> what do you think he's doing? Yeah, he knows right where he is. But I thought that was pretty cool. Not that you should go looking through every picture and see where the boats are parked. And, of course, that's where I caught my personal best, right there. There again, there's that personal best in that shallow area. And you can see where that comes in, and then it splits out and swings right there. Something different. And that's what I kind of look for when I'm running around trying to find different spots. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Homeport. If you want to go ahead and download Homeport, if you don't have your maps installed on it, uh, you're not going to get any detail like this. As you can see right now, I've got my SD card plugged in where I copied my maps. And it took about an hour and a half to copy those maps over. So it was pretty cumbersome doing that. As you can see, now I've got all my maps on an SD card. I can plug them in here and take a look at them and have some detail. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is rather than showing you the depths, you kind of have to hold your cursor on line like that. And then the depths show up. So it's not as intuitive as I would like it. But it's a pretty good option. And I'm going to play around with it some more. I'm not so sure I can't get a little better detail out of this. So the way this works, when you have your maps, and these are the preloaded maps in your Garmin unit. When you have those loaded in there, they're broke up into regions in the United States. If you got the lake view. G3 detailed map, and I'll double click on that. So see that green line? It's kind of hard to see, but that's the area that's encompassed in that map. And the next map you can see runs pretty much in the northeast. This region here covers your Dakotas, Wyoming, California, Oregon. And this is my map here. It covers most of Texas, Louisiana, Arizona, and the rest of California. So that's how the maps are broke up. When you look at your SD card, you're going to see four different maps, and that's four different sections of the United States. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the lake from Google Earth Pro and Active Captain at the same time and transfer some waypoints back and forth. You don't have to transport them as, as you go like we're going to do, but I want to demonstrate how you can do that pretty easily. So let's go in here first and let's set our units. So in the Active Captain app, we'll go to Settings, 
and then we'll go into the units and position and go ahead and set that position on the decimals because it's easier when you go to transfer them and then come over here to Google Earth Pro go to tools options and right down here your default is degrees and minutes or seconds in both of them but I went ahead and changed it to decimal degrees because it's easier to work with and then just hit apply and you're ready to go all right so let's start out by putting a waypoint at the boat ramp and if you come to Lake McKenzie this is kind of a horrible boat ramp it's the only drawback to going here is you park up here in the parking lot you get your boat ready you bring it down this ramp and then there's this tiny turnaround area and I've got a big old long truck so it's pretty tough you won't see a lot of big bass boats because right in here that's a big hump and it's hard for those boats to get over unless the lakes way up and as you can see from the dam up here uh, it's pretty low and it's been pretty low. This was this image was 2016 and if we go back to 2012 you can see how low that was. Alright, so anyway, let's go ahead and set a waypoint. And we'll put it out away from the ramp a little bit. And we'll call it, I'm gonna call it LM for Lake McKenzie ramp. So now to transfer that over to Active Captain, go down here to properties and there's your latitude and your longitude. And we'll go back to the Active Captain chart. So an Active Captain, if you already know where you're going, just press your thumb on there and set a waypoint. And then go into the properties of that waypoint. And from there, you can set your latitude and longitude. We've got 34. Oh, nine. Whoop, the nine won't go in there. <laughs> I already knew that. So I wanted to show you that because you want to round that off. So it's going to be 109 is, we'll go ahead and make that one oh, and we'll see how close we get with that. Then on the longitude, we'll go 101, 44, 44. We'll round off those numbers. Then we'll go view on chart. There you can see we're at the boat ramp. Now, I would always suggest for accuracy, we're just showing this so you can look at it back and forth, but for accuracy, I would always go ahead and export the file and then import it into Active Captain like I showed on that previous video. And I'm not going to name these right now because I'm going to go ahead and transfer these over from Google Maps when I'm done. So we kind of get an idea how that works. So let's look for something different on the lake. And that kind of sticks out a little bit. There in that cove. So let's go ahead and mark a waypoint here. We'll go ahead and go to that. Then we can see the longitude and latitude here. So let's go ahead and set a new waypoint on Google Earth Pro. So Lake McKenzie, and we'll change the longitude and latitude up here. And 
Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that 2012 image anyway. Yeah, you can see this. See that looks like a creek running in there. That does look pretty interesting. Look at this point over here. I think we'll go ahead and set one there. We'll call that Lake McKenzie Point. All right, let's go back over here and just set a random waypoint. And view on chart. Yeah, so you can see there, you can see where that point's coming out, right in there. So, and that's something you may not pick up on because of your shading, but you can see where that runs out. You'd have to look at it pretty close. So I hope this video's helped you. And as you can see, there's a lot of different ways of getting waypoints right there on your computer without actually getting out on the water. And you can do a lot of homework Right there at home while you're still waiting on the ice to clear or like where I'm at, you're waiting for the wind to stop blowing and stop snowing. So for a detailed video on how to transfer those waypoints in between the different programs, go ahead and check out this video. And hey, in the meantime, keep calm and hook them and we'll see you on the next one.